Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord? Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord? God Almighty. Holy, holy, holy. I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 are you Lord? Holy, 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 are you Lord? Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you all doing, Kingdom Citizens? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Another glorious Sunday morning. Amen. I pray and hope that you all woke up with the praise, worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord God Almighty. And that you're ready to conquer and be victorious in this day. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Good morning. All right, so this is a year in the Bible, a daily Bible reading where we are getting through the Bible in one entire year. We are in Ezekiel 12, 13, and 14, and then Hebrews 9 this morning. So, we ready? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creative heaven and earth, we just come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you have woken us up to, again this morning. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything that you are and everything that you are doing in our lives, Lord God. We do pray continually asking for healing increase you know financial support lord god you know things that we deal with on a daily basis lord jesus our health our finances you know and circumstance different circumstances in different um, households but majority it's the health and the finances that majority of us Lord God, deal with on a daily basis. And so we just continue to pray that you make moves out of no way, make ways out of no way, Lord God. And we know that you are working on our behalf, Lord Jesus, and that you're interceding for us every single day. And we just glorify you and we thank you, Lord God, for all of it, everything that you're doing. We thank you for the increase of knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Teach us, Lord. Teach us your ways. Teach us how to seek first the kingdom of heaven. Teach us what it is that you want us to seek for. Teach us everything, your commandments, your statutes. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God. Fill us with your essence, Lord Jesus. And we just, we're here and we're ready and we want to be obedient to you, Lord God. And we pray this prayer in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh, in Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Amen. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Kingdom citizens. Let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. 
Ezekiel 12. Yesterday's reading was very, very interesting because we got, we got to read um, two visions that was given to Ezekiel by the Lord God Almighty. Very, very, very interesting visions. All right, so Ezekiel 12. says the word of the Lord also came unto me saying son of man thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house which have eyes to see and see not they have ears to hear and hear not for they are a rebellious house therefore thou son of man Prepare thee stuff for removing, and remove by day in their sight. And thou shalt remove from thy place to another place in their sight. It may be they will consider, though they be a rebellious house. Then shalt thou bring forth thy stuff by day in their sight, as stuff for removing, and thou shalt go forth at even in their sight, as they that go forth into captivity. Dig thou through the wall in their sight, and carry out thereby. In their sight shalt thou bear it upon thy shoulders, and carry it forth in the twilight. Thou shalt cover thy face, that thou see not the ground. For I have set thee for a sign unto the house of Israel. And, and I did so as I was commanded. I brought forth my stuff by day as stuff for captivity. And in the even I digged through the wall with mine hand. I brought it forth in the twilight and I bear it upon my shoulder in their sight. And in the morning came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, hath not the house of Israel, the rebellious house, said unto thee, What dost thou? Say thou unto them, Thus said the Lord God, This burden concerneth the prince in Jerusalem, and all the house of Israel that are among them. Say, I am your sign. Like as I have done, so shall it be done unto them. They shall remove and go into captivity. And the prince that is among them shall bear upon his shoulders in the twilight and shall go forth. They shall dig through the wall to carry out thereby. He shall cover his face that he see not the ground with his eyes. My net also will I spread upon him, and he shall be taken in my snare, and I will bring him to Babylon, to the land of the Chaldeans. Yet shall he not see it, though he shall die there. And I will scatter toward every wind all that are about him to help him, and all his bands, and I will draw out the sword after them, and they shall know that I am the Lord." when I shall scatter them among the nations and disperse them in the countries. You know, I want to kind of pause there, you know, and go back to verse 2 where he says, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a rebellious house, which have eyes to see and see not. They have ears to hear and hear not, for they are a rebellious house. I mean, they literally are able to see and able to hear, and yet they they have made it a decision in their heart to disobey God. That's where rebellion is. Rebellion is when you literally choose 
to turn the other way and 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 disobey you refuse to follow rules or or whatever you know and it's like and i'm i'm really starting to see the difference between um ezekiel and and jeremiah ezekiel is literally used as a physical like his body is used as a physical literal physical sign like he has to do actual physical prophecies where he physically has to do things to prophesy um and that that is because you know you know god built him to be able to do these things and it's like whoa um all right that's all i had to say for that <laughs> if you have any comments on what we're reading but i just wanted to point it that I, I that was just that stood out to me how how they have the the eyes to see and the ears to hear but they just refuse you know they refuse to obey you know all right so ezekiel 12 verse 16 says but i will leave a few men of them from the sword from the famine and from the pestilence that they may declare all their abominations among the heathen whither they come and they shall know that I am the Lord moreover the word of the Lord came to me saying son of man eat thy bread with quaking and drink thy water with trembling and with carefulness and say unto the people of the land thus said the Lord God of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and of the land of Israel they shall eat their bread with carefulness and drink their water with astonishment that her land may be desolate from all that is therein because of the violence of all them that dwell therein and the cities that are inhabited shall be laid waste and the land shall be desolate and ye shall know that I am the Lord and the word of the Lord came unto me saying son of man what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel saying the days are prolonged and every vision faileth tell them therefore thus said the Lord God I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel but say unto them the days are at hand and the effect of every vision for there shall be no more any vain vision nor flattering divination within the house of Israel for I am the Lord I will speak and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass it shall be no more prolonged for in your days O rebellious house Will I say the word and will perform it, say the Lord God. Again, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, The vision that he seeth is for many days to come. And he prophesies of the times that are far off. Therefore say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, there shall none of my words be prolonged any more, but the word which I have spoken shall be done, say the Lord God. Whoa, like so I guess there there was people, you know, that were that were saying that they're having visions and things like that, and God says, uh uh, y'all not being able to have no more visions he said what i speak he said i am the lord i will speak and whatever what i speak will come to pass you know it's like god is so awesome and then they, and then and then they're like oh well, whatever he says it's not going to happen for a long time it's going to be a long time and he's like no 
no more prolonging. What I say is going to happen right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, because he can, you, he can hear your, he can hear what you're saying in your heart. You know, even if they're not saying it amongst each other, they're saying it and he can hear. And he's like, son of man, they're, they're walking around saying that what I say is not going to happen for a long time. He said, no, you tell them, no, it's just going to happen right now. <laughs> you know, I love the Lord God. Like God is awesome. Like you, you, you can't put anything past him. Like that you can't, you can't do anything without him not knowing it. He's, he's right there. You know, you may think, oh, God is far from me or God is, you, you, God is not, he, he does, you know, there's people that say God hate me and God doesn't love me and God, but God is right there listening to everything you say. God is right there hearing every word that even utters in your mind, you know, and, and, and you can't, you can't hide from him. You can't pack, put the, anything past him. None of that. And so the Lord God, he's, he's even speaking through these words, even for today. He said, what I say, what I say and what I speak will be done. It will be done. And it, and it just reminds me again how uh, I was standing on, on, on some uh, church house grounds. I was standing on the, on the land and I heard him say, my voice will be heard, LaShonda. You know, and I heard him as clear as day. He said, I'm taking back my land. I'm taking back my land and my voice will be heard. And 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 and, th and that's what this, you know, it's like God, God, when God speaks, it's going to happen. So if you have eyes to see, see. Don't turn your eyes away from the Lord. If you have ears to hear, hear him. And 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 let him prepare you to be ready for whatever it is that he bringeth upon the earth. That he the, the punishments whatever that he brings to the people. You know, be ready and hear and see what it is that God is doing. Don't ignore it. Don't turn your face. Don't turn your back towards him. And just know that he said what, what he speaks, it's going to happen. Amen. I say, Jesus, come, Jesus, come. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. Amen. All right. So Ezekiel 13, if you are just coming on, good morning. We are in Ezekiel 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy. <laughs> Wow. Would you like to be in that position? And say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, Thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. Glory, glory. Ooh. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty. I, I am hearing the Lord like... Hear what the Lord God is saying. Amen. 
All right, um, verse 6, we are in Ezekiel 13, verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they, excuse me, they have, and they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Wow, so they're looking they're looking for other people to agree with them. They're okay, so these false prophets, these prop these prophets that that God didn't even send is looking for people to say, "Oh yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree." Oh my goodness, Lord. That is happening right now. Like that is really happening right now. There's a lot of prophets that are that that are just putting prophecies out there every single day they're putting prophecies out there and they're just looking for people to just agree with them agree with them so verse 7 have ye not seen a vain vision and have ye not spoken a lying divination whereas ye say the lord saith it Albeit I have not spoken. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace. And one built up a wall and lo others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the daubing? Wherewith ye have daubed it? Therefore, thus said the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar and bring it down to the ground so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered and it shall fall and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar and will say unto you, the wall is no more, neither they that daubed it, to wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jer Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, said the Lord God. So one thing, as we as we can see, is okay. One, God can't stand disobedience. He can't stand evil and wicked, and he definitely don't like those who lie against him, who put him and, 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 and try to prophesy saying God said and God didn't say. That means you just lied against the Lord. Don't, don't say things and you know God didn't say. You know you didn't hear that from the Lord. <laughs> you know you didn't hear it from the Lord. So don't say it. You know, don't go around telling people This is happening literally every day right now. 
and, and I see it. I see it every single day. People are prophesying things, vanity, like every day. I see it on social media. I, I you know, every single day they're they're prophesying vanity, and and it's like. Like, how are they getting away with that? Like, you know, I and and I prayed about that. I was like, they're they're just putting out these prophecies, and 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 it, and and it's to the mass majority of the people, and it's like, like who who are they who are they prophesying over? You know, I see it every day, every day, and and I prayed about it. And and here here it is in the word where God is saying, I'm against that. No. I am against that. All right, so good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Ezekiel 13, verse 17. Ezekiel 13, verse 17. All right, it says, Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And say, Thus said the Lord God, Woe to the women that sew pillows to all armholes, and make kerchiefs upon the head of every stature to hunt souls will ye hunt the souls of my people and will ye save the souls alive that come unto you and will ye pollute me among my people for handfuls of barley and for pieces of bread to slay the souls that should not die and to save the souls alive that should not live by your lying to my people that hear your lies. Wherefore thus said the Lord God, Behold, I am against your pillows, wherewith ye there, wherewith ye there hunt the souls to make them fly, and I will tear them from your arms, and I will let the souls go, even the souls that ye hunt to make them fly. Your kerchiefs also will I tear, and deliver my people out of your hand, and they shall be no more in your hand to be hunted, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. Therefore ye shall no more vanity nor divine divinations, for I will deliver my people out of your hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Oh, glory to God. God is really, really speaking. Glory to the Lord God. You know, it's like... um it's like you know saying you 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 see you you see somebody that's evil and wicked and it's almost like saying oh everything is going to be good peace be unto you brother you know and it's like what god is going uh uh they're going to be punished you know don't don't prophesy things that you feel need to be done or don't prophesy things that that is in your heart this is what you desire for to happen you 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 want to see that evil wicked or that evil or that wicked man saved you want to see him saved and so you tell him yes you will have long life and god didn't tell you to tell him that <laughs> you know it's like don't be a false prophet. Don't speak things 
according to the desires of your heart. Like literally hear from the Lord. You know? And, and, and if you are a prophet, that is something you definitely want to pray for. And you, you want to make sure you check yourself at the door every morning. The moment you wake up, you know, Lord, do not let no lies come out of my mouth. You know, I, I don't I don't want to lie against the Lord God Almighty. You know, I don't want to do it. That's not even a desire in my heart. And, and then there are prophets out there right now. They're doing it every day. Prophets out there doing it every single day. And Ezekiel, Ezekiel has to be used by the Lord God to prophesy against prophets. Like, and you don't see that too many. You don't see that too many times, even now today. You don't see too many prophets prophesying against prophets that are that are fake, that are false. You know. So, anyone have anything to say before we move on to chapter fourteen? Anyone have anything to add? what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Oh, so I'm reading some of my commentary and it says uh, for verses 17 through 22 uh, concerning the pillows and the kerchiefs, it says women practice magic in Jerusalem as well as in Babylon. These women were using amulets, pillows and veils, kerchiefs and some kind of incantation to deceive people. Wow. They were perverting morality for profit. There were a number of legitimate prophetesses in the Old Testament, including Miriam. Okay. It says God will bring vain prophecy and sorcery to an end. Counterfeit prophets attempted to thwart the prophets of God who announced the coming doom. The false prophets were motivated by self-interest. The Christian is to test every spirit and examine everything in light of scripture. So I was I was wondering about what, you know, what the pillows and the kerchiefs were. Like, okay. Hmm. That's interesting. Anyone have anything to say? All right. So let's move on to Ezekiel 14. Good morning. If you are just coming on, we are in Ezekiel 14. It says, Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus said the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols 
and turn away your faces from all your abominations. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man and I will make him a sign and a proverb and I will cut him off from the midst of my people and ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived when he has spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. And I will stretch out my hand upon him and I will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh unto him. Oh, I, I pray, I pray for the people of God and that they turn from their wicked and evil ways, especially prophets. Even, even now in this day, I pray, I pray that those that are false, that they turn from their ways, they turn from their ways and they repent. He's saying, I'm giving you a chance to repent. I'm giving you a chance to turn from your ways, from, from the idols of your heart. Like I'm giving you an opportunity and a chance to repent. And so I pray, I pray that the prophets that are out there falsely prophesying, I pray that they will hear the Lord God Almighty, open their ears and open their eyes and realize what they are doing and, and, um, and I even pray, Lord God, you know, uh, continue to search my heart continue to search my heart my mind my soul remove anything that is not of you lord god you know like man all right so ezekiel 14 verse 11 says that the house of israel may go no more astray from me neither be polluted any more with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. The word of the Lord came again to me saying, Son of man, when the land sinneth against me by trespassing grievously, then will I stretch out my hand upon it and will break the staff of the bread thereof and will send famine upon it and I will cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, saith the Lord God. If I cause noisome beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so that it be desolate, that no man pass may pass through because of the beasts. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters. They only shall be delivered, but the land shall be desolate. Or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, sword, go through the land so that I cut off man and beast from it. Though these three men were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered themselves. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my fury upon it in blood to cut off from it men and beasts, though Noah, Daniel, and Job 
were in it. As I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. For thus said the Lord God, how much more when I send my four swords judgments upon Jerusalem, the sword and the famine and the noisome beasts and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. Yet behold, their end shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters. Behold, they shall come forth unto you and ye shall see their way and their doings and ye shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem, even concerning all that I have brought upon it. And they shall comfort you when ye see their ways and their doings. And ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord God. Amen. You know, him him mentioning the three, Noah, Daniel, and Job, and he's saying that they are not going to be able, they will not be able to deliver son nor daughter. You know, it's, 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 it's like he's saying, if they don't make the choice, we can pray, we can pray for people all day, every day. And we pray without ceasing. We pray for each other. But if that person don't make that choice, if that person doesn't make that choice to believe in the Lord, to trust in the Lord, to depend on the Lord, to rely on the Lord, if that person doesn't turn from their evil and wicked ways, if that person doesn't remove the idols from their, from their heart, and, and so, so now, not only is he, you know, he he has he has mentioned and spoken of the physical idols, but now he's saying they're spiritual idols. So if if they don't if they don't choose to turn from all these ways, we can't deliver them. We we're n we're not going to be able to deliver them. We're not going to be able to because if they choose to turn their back on God and if they choose to, to, to be rebellious and they choose to sin because that's what they want to that's that's what they say it's their life you know don't don't be forcing that you know word on me you know if they if they choose to just you're gonna have to let them go they they will remain in their wilderness. They will remain in their wilderness. They will not receive the inheritance. They will not receive the promises of God because they choose to disobey and they choose to, to look the other way, you know? And as people of God, you know, sometimes we have to really understand that. We have to really, you know, understand that we cannot no matter what, we cannot deliver anybody. You know, they have to make that choice to be delivered. They have to choose it within their mind and in their heart and in their soul. They have to de make that decision to want to be saved. You know? And it's, it's a sad thing and it hurts, you know, Sometimes, especially if we're if, if we if we're watching our closest loved ones just drowning, if we you know, and and we've we've done everything we can, you know, we've we've put the word out there, we've planted the seeds in them, but the seeds die and dry up because they were, they have not made that decision, you know. And so we, we, we have to, you know, realize, we have to realize and say some, not everybody, not everybody will be saved because they choose it. They choose that. They choose not to be saved. 
All right. So good morning. If you are just coming on, we are moving on to Hebrews 9. Does anyone have anything to say according to what we read in Ezekiel 12, 13, and 14? Any comments? All right, so Hebrews 9. All right, then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first, wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the eras of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks, in divers washings, and carnal ordinances, imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ, being come an high priest of good things to come, by a, great, uh, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Amen. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the te testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament, 
which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with, the, with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty. If, if that's not a reason to give thanks to the Lord God, I, I, I don't know what is. Like, the Lord Jesus Christ deserves your sacrifice of thanks every single day. This, this, this writer, this, this person literally distinguished the difference between what they had to do in the wilderness when they made the tabernacle, how they had to, how they had to purge themselves before they could even. And so the priest had to go in first in the tabernacle in order to even get to the Holy of Holies, you know? And so they had to, the, the priest would have to literally cut goats and calves and use that blood and literally place it on, uh, you know, the horn and, and things like that. And he had to literally sprinkle the people with blood of, of animals, you know, and they had to go through all these rituals just to even be able to be in the Holy of Holies, you know? And so Jesus Christ came and said, you know what? There's so much fault in this. I'm going, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to take care of it. And I'm going to become the high priest. And I'm going to sacrifice my blood. You know, like he deserves, he deserves your sacrifice of thanks every single day. Because he offers himself. He stands before the, he stands before the father every single day for you. Every single day. He stands before the father he is the high priest. He sacrificed himself so we don't have to go through all the rituals and things like that. We don't have to do all of that now. We just come to him. We just come to him. And he he stands in the holy of holies for us. You know? He appears in the presence of God for us every single day, every day. So he, he deserves, he deserves your thanks. Thank him every day. That, that should not be something that, that, you know, is forced. It should, it should come from your heart because you realize, you know, what he has done what he has done for you. There's many times where I even pray and I say, thank you, Lord, for choosing me to believe. 
I, I say thank you, Lord God, for choosing me to believe in you. Because he's the one that chose you. You didn't choose him. You were the one that was lost. And he came and found you. You know. He chose you to believe in him. Because he saw it in your heart. When, when he made you. When he created you. He, he gave you a heart. That would be after him. He gave you a heart that would be open to him. He gave you a soft heart that would receive him and, and accept him, you know? So he chose you. He chose you to believe. And, and, and I thank God. I thank the Lord God Almighty for that. That he chose me to believe. And believing is the first work. To believe in the Lord God is the first work of the labor of the Lord. To believe. And then he will teach you how to trust him. He will teach you how to depend on him. He will teach you how to rely on him. And, and, and he will teach you how to, 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 to release and surrender your entire life, everything about you, to him. You know, and, and that way he can use you. That's why it says, present yourself holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Say, here I am, Jesus. Here I am, Lord. You know, have your way with me. Amen. So anyone else has anything else to say? Y'all are so quiet this morning. Anything, anything, anything. All right, so we, this morning we read out of Ezekiel 12, chapter 12, 13, and 14, and then we read Hebrews 9. Um, definitely go back and read them again, study, look up words, you know, and really get deep and, and really hear what the Lord God is saying for this time, for this hour, you know. Um, well, that's it. No one has anything to say. So, you know, I love you all. Uh, I know y'all are going to be, you know, listening to some great pastors and things like that this morning. Um, and just, you know, sit in the presence of the Lord God almighty today. Um, and, and and literally conquer today and be victorious in today, you know, and um, and allow God to continue to increase you in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So, I love you all. That's it. Go back and watch the replay if you are just coming on. Don't forget to share and invite others to come on every morning at 5.30 um, to get into the words of God. Um, it's the reading of the word of God. Um, and it's, it's just been an amazing thing to develop our relationship with the Lord, you know, and we're doing it together. So don't forget to share and invite and I love you all. So you all have a wonderful, awesome, beautiful, blessed day on purpose. And I will see you 530 in the morning.